Hey guys, Zach here and welcome back to my channel. Well, the Old School Mods released a new dev blog today on some new ideas that will be pulled soon and possibly making their way into the game at some point later on. First, we have the concept of silver jewelry, and this was something that was on Reddit not too long ago and seemed like a really original idea. Uh, Loremaster RS was the creator, and he also incorporated uses for lesser used gems like opal, jade, and red topaz to create brand new, exclusive to 07 silver jewelry that is effectively mid tier and has some practical uses. Also, given that the only two uses for silver currently in the game are tiaras and holy symbols, that content was in need of revival, and this gives it some. What Loremaster has suggested is a ring, necklace, amulet, and silver bracelet for opal, jade, and red topaz. When enchanted, the opal ring becomes the ring of pursuit, which gives the wearer a 25% chance to show the entire path of an animal being tracked. Now, given that no one I actually know tracks kebits or anything else in the hunter skill for that matter, it would seem that this is more dead content and doesn't have much use. The opal bracelet is called the expeditious bracelet, and when worn, gives the chance of a slayer kill counting as two towards a task, but with no additional experience. So, this would be somewhat helpful if you're grinding a task you don't like, but that being said, there are plenty of better options to wear in the ring slot. Again, this may be geared toward much lower combat players who are just beginning Slayer and don't have the option to purchase a Berserker ring or anything like that. Although a Ring of Wealth would probably be an ideal choice for the lower levels because of the coin accumulation feature. The Opal Necklace is the Dodgy Necklace and it gives a 25% chance to prevent a failed pickpocket from stunning or damaging you. Now this could actually be worthwhile for anyone who is pickpocketing Knights of Artie or the Artie Knights, or anything else for that matter. Finally, the Opal Necklace is the Amulet of Bounty, and it gives a 25% chance to conserve some seeds while planting in allotment patches. This seems useful for farming, and I don't know why it wouldn't be well received. Although, if this was to conserve seeds in herb patches, it might have a more practical use, but then that might be too overpowered for the game, and people would not like it. Moving on to the Jade Jewelry, the Ring is the Ring of Returning, which simply teleports you to your current respawn location. The Bracelet is the Flamtar Bracelet, or Flametar Bracelet, I'm not really sure how you pronounce that, which makes each build at the Morton Temple substantially more effective. The Necklace of Passage is the Jade Silver Necklace, and it supplies teleports to the Wizard's Tower, the Outpost, and south of the Desert Eagle's Eyrie in the Caridian Desert. Finally, the Jade Amulet of Chemistry gives a 5% chance of a 4-dose potion being created while making a potion. Finally, the Red Topaz Jewelry is essentially the upper tier of the proposed Silver Jewelry lineup. The ring is called Ef I'm sorry to pronounce this right, Efarate's Aid, and allows any attack to deal damage to vampires. One charge is depleted per attack, but the only use this would seem to have is for killing Vire Watches and Shade Burning, which has minimal interest already. Although maybe if you're a low level and you're slaying vampires, then you might want to find then you might find some use for this. The Bracelet of Slaughter is essentially the opposite of the Expeditious Bracelet mentioned earlier, and gives a chance of a kill on a Slayer task not counting towards your task, but still giving you the experience. So that's kind of nice. The Necklace of Faith restores 10% of total prayer points if your hit points fall under 20% while worn. Uh, this is a similar function to the Phoenix Necklace, but those necklaces seem more viable in these same kind of situations, although I can see the correlation and possibly the interest in that. Finally, the Burning Amulet gives teleports to the Chaos Temples, the Bandit Camp, and a location south of the Lava Mage. All of these would be useful for clues and hopefully could be integrated along with the Necklace of Passage into the jewelry boxes of player-owned houses. Moving on to the proposed Ballista rework, it really seems like Jagex can't decide what to do with these. Just last week they brought the Heavy Ballista's range attack down to plus 110 to make it less powerful for lower combat levels and peers, but its usefulness was likewise lessened for higher combat levels. These proposed changes basically brings the Light Ballista's range attack up to what the current Heavy Ballista's attack level is, which is 110, but it also increases the range requirement to 65 and allows it to use every type of javelin. The Heavy Ballista's range attack would be boosted back to 100 plus 125 and its range strength to plus 15, but it would also require 75 range and completion of Monkey Madness 2 to wield. I personally would not count on this passing. Peers are going to be very upset, and I don't necessarily agree with that mindset because the Light Ballista it would essentially be what the Heavy Ballista already has been. This would, however, firmly cement the Heavy Ballista as a high-tier weapon that is not meant for lower levels at all, specifically one defense peers. The Seer's Ring is due for a buff, however. Jagex wants to increase the magic attack and defense by 50%, moving the stats in each of those categories from plus 4 to plus 6, and those changes would also correspond to the imbued version of the ring, with those stats being boosted to plus 12 instead of just plus 8. 
I'm personally in favor of this, and I would like to see the Sears ring be stronger as it is underpowered, in my opinion, as it stands right now. Now, in these dev blogs, the other questions section is one of my favorites because there are always some hidden gems stuck down in here that I would love to see in the game. So there are a few more interesting proposals that I personally would like to see pass. You can read through all of these on your own time. I'm just going to mention a few of these. If you look right here, should the respawn rate of Scorpia be reduced to 10 seconds? Personally, I think it should. The boss is already dangerous enough as it is with the current wait time, which is a little bit long. And even though I don't regularly kill Scorpia, I think it would be beneficial to those who do kill it to have the opportunity for faster kills. If you move down further, magic boosting prayers currently only affect magic attack. Should this be changed also to increase magic defense? If so, this would have a huge effect potentially on bossing and Armadillo in particular. High mage defense is a must there, and more so than not, I personally find myself getting hit hard by the boss's mage attack. Unfortunately, you cannot pray Mystic Might and Eagle Eye at the same time, so I feel that while in theory this update sounds good, it wouldn't be practical for Armadillo, but might have a better use at, say, the Kraken boss, where mage attack and defense are both utilized at the same time. Finally, there is a proposal to change the current Barrow's KC display to a percentage towards maximum potential rewards. There has long been confusion about what types of kill counts are ideal for getting the best loot at Barrow's, and this would be immensely useful in clearing that up. And if your kill count was 11, you wouldn't be left wondering that I only kill skeletons or did I add an crypt rat. This would pretty much clear up you have the best chance at potential rewards, and you don't have to go back and kill anything else. That does it for this week's dev blog, and it should be noted, you guys should remember that these are just suggestions that are just now reaching the polling phase. They aren't actually slated to be added in the game anytime soon. So I've given you my personal thought on these updates, and would be curious to know your thoughts down below. I hope the community personally stays away from the mindset of, I don't like this, so it shouldn't be in game. Maybe just think of other lower level players who might actually enjoy the updates instead of just writing it off. So thanks for watching this video, and if you enjoyed the content today, hit the like button and subscribe if you would like to be part of future content. Have a great day, guys, and I'll see you next time.